when you live in a house with limited space, you have to get creative in how you use each room. I do not believe that because something is labeled a dining room, you can only dine in there. You'll see in a future video how I have added a corner in the dining room for puzzle building. I have stashed things under the dining buffet um, for sewing. So you have to get creative when you live in a small space. This little corner of our bedroom, and now our bedroom is a decent size. Like I said, we have two bedrooms. Um, in an empty nester kind of community. So the master bedroom is quite large. In this little nook of it, I decided that this is where I'm going to put my office. I don't have a designated area and I wanted something that was going to be inviting, um, cute, colorful. That would be a place that I wanted to spend time with. That's where I edit videos. That's where I write correspondence. Um, so this is my little nook in the bedroom that I have turned into a home office. I have some thrift store paintings. Um, I have family pictures that mean a lot to me. A pretty tablecloth over just a utility um, folding table. You know those tables that you use outside when you have company or uh, something like that. So this is what I've done to my little office area. And I have to tell you, I'm loving it. want to take a minute before we start this week's conversation to thank you for last week's. That was really fun. I wasn't sure how this was going to work out, but you guys made it amazing. So thank you for leaving your comments. I hope that I was able to respond to each of them. I'm really um, trying to make it a point because I really do want to um, answer any questions you have and hear what you have to say. So today I really want to talk about Fear. We live in uncertain times, that's a given, but um, without taking this in any way politically or over-religiously, um, although I think that everything has a biblical viewpoint to it, um, I don't want to get into that conversation. We all have our beliefs, we all have um, our opinions. That's not what I want this to be about. What I want to talk to you about is not living in a state of fear. Fear is debilitating. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a prepper so much, but I do enjoy having a full pantry. I do think it's wise to keep a good stock up of things. But what I realized, and I have to admit this, to you as I admitted it to God, I was leaning towards a spirit of fear in what I had um, stockpiled. I told you I have been going through my closets and my pantries and that included my overflow pantry that I have in the spare bedroom. And when I started to pull things out of it because I wanted to remove everything. I wanted to make sure dates were okay because you don't want food to go bad because you haven't used it. And all of that, all of those things that we do um, to be wise stewards of what we have, I just kept pulling stuff out. I mean, it got a little bit ridiculous and it, it was a very big wake up call for me 
to say to myself, what, what do you got going on here? As I was pulling stuff out, God really convicted me. I mean, I, I wanted to cry. I realized that I had taken God out of the equation. I, I had put all of the sufficiency of my household on myself and I was just hoarding a lot of food. So I went through it all. I kept what I thought was a reasonable amount for us to have as excess as, as overflow um, that would carry us through a major um, weather event or a job loss or an illness or any of that would carry us through uh, for a good portion of time. But I did not need to stock my cupboards like there would be no food one day. I don't want to live that way. I want to live um, prepared, yes, but I want to live with a joyful heart, not waiting for the other shoe to fall. I want to live um, and love my family and take care of my family um, without a spirit of fear. I don't want them to look at me and see a person that's relying on themselves. All that to say, I want to challenge you to look at your life and honestly ask yourself, am I living in fear? Am I living in 2024 wondering all of the worst case scenarios? And there are a lot of them out there. Um, am I wondering how I'm going to survive that? Am I wondering why should I even try? Am I um, always sad and depressed because my grandkids have to grow up in this time? Um, and then I want you, especially if you're around my age, close to my age, and you've lived a little bit, I want you to go back and think of how many times in the past our parents, our grandparents, and on and on and on thought that they were living in the worst of times. What was happening to the youth? What was happening to the economy? Why is gas so high? Why are my groceries so high? Um, all of these things. Why is the interest rate so high? When I bought my first house, the interest rate was 17% for a house. We got it down to 11% and we thought we were just like riding high. So all of this is cyclical. Are there signs? Are there um, things out there that we need to be concerned about? Of course, but there always has been. Is there a God greater than all of this who knows exactly what needs to happen, what's going to happen, and when it is going to happen? Yes, absolutely. What are we gonna trust in? The world of fear or a God who's in control of the entire world. So my challenge to you is look at your heart. Are you living in a spirit of fear? And what can you do? What can you give up? What can you realistically prepare yourself for physically? But more importantly, what can you prepare yourself for spiritually to turn that fear into trust, to turn that fear into joy? to turn that fear into hope for the future. So, our conversation point today, what are you afraid of? How have you prepared physically? And are you willing, are you already trusting God with the rest? That is our tea time for today. I will let you know that I am drinking, this is another good one. This is Salada Soothing Tea. It is chamomile and rose blossom herbal tea. It's yummy. It's another good one. And this is, whoo, the zucchini bread. It's actually zucchini and pineapple and raisins and nuts. Just about everything you could throw into a quick bread is in here and it's yummy. So. That is tea time for today. There is, of course, still more video to come. 
I want to thank you for joining in on the conversation. Please leave a comment. Let's get back to the video. trying to make it a habit when I go to the grocery store when I come home I wash my produce right away that way when I go to use it I know it's ready for me I know there's no question it's already been washed I just use a simple um, combination of doTERRA's hand wash soap I know the ingredients are all clean and mild totally safe for my food I also add a couple of drops of a citrus um, essential oil, again from doTERRA because I trust their quality, and some vinegar. I feel like this combination really gets rid of as much of whatever might be on the skin of my produce and make it as healthy as possible. I have to admit I am not always buying organic, nor do I always trust organic to truly be organic. So. I always will soak my veg for a few minutes, maybe five minutes, and then I will give it a quick rub down with my fingers. If it's something like potatoes, I will use a brush. But if it's just soft skinned uh, produce, then I will just use my fingers, uh, rub it off really well, and give it a good rinse and leave it out to dry. And then um, when I need it for cooking, for snacking, for whatever, um, it's ready to go. Do you pre-wash your produce or do you wait until you need it? That's all for today's video. I want to thank you for joining me. Thank you for commenting. Let me know um, your thoughts on fear. I really um, have had that on my heart a lot lately. I do want to let you know um, I will continue to do homemaking videos on Tuesday. I'm enjoying it so much, but I'm also going to start adding a gardening video for garden lovers out there on Saturdays. I'm not going to mix the two because I find that I have women who like either one or the other. And if you like both, then just go ahead and watch both. So that's it for today. 
Thanks again for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.